Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the CSTV. I'm your host, Kathleen Egal Toto, Madam CS, and this is the Women Warriors of Africa's Independency. Stay tuned and have it raw and real. Virginia Wamboi Otieno, she hit the Kenyan headlines in the famous case Wamboi versus the state. In this case, the late Virginia Wamboi Otieno was battling with her husband's kings with regards to the parallel place of his husband. In this case, she lost, but later alone she emerged as one of the leading women activists in Kenya, finally finding herself in a marriage controversy. Who was Virginia Wamboi Otieno, famously known as the Mau Mau daughter? Her story of taking 15 oaths of Mau Mau is Piari, told the CSTV travels back to history to tell you who is Virginia Wamboi Otieno, where was she born, how was she raised up, how did she join Mau Mau War of Independence, why did she take all the 15 oaths of Mau Mau Rebellion and more importantly, what was her role in the Mau Mau War of Independence? Stay tuned and have it true and real. Wamboi. She was born in 1936 in Kiambu District, Southern Kikuyu Land, as Virginia Edith Wamboi Waiyaki. She became Wamboi Otieno after her first marriage to Silvanus Milea Otieno in 1963 and became Wamboi Otieno Mbugua after her second marriage to Peter Mbugua in 2003. Back to her old days, Wamboi was born in a prominent Kikuyu family, the family of Waiyak Wahinga. A prominent Kikuyu man who was arrested and buried alive by the British for opposing the seizure of Kikuyu land. His father, Tyrus Wantoni Waiyaki, was a police inspector, a position that he is said to have been granted by the British administrators in Kenya as a compensation for the murder of his father. Waiyaki Wahinga. Wamboi came from a well of family evident in the level of education she and her three brothers acquired. Her three brothers studied in Britain. Wamboi herself attended Mambere Girls High School, the best girls' school and the best level of education for Africans at the time. It is noted that Wamboi's hatred for the white people began with the fact that his grandfather Wayaki Wahinga was buried alive by the British. As a result, in 1952, when the Mau Mau War broke, Wamboi joined the war. However, it is important to note that Wamboi took her first oath of Mau Mau while she was just 16 years old as a schoolgirl. This oath was administered by their teacher, an oath she took innocently with some of her classmates. In her autobiography, The Mau Mau Daughter, a life of Wamboi Otieno, she tells us that she didn't know that she had taken the oath of Mau Mau. She only thought that it was a cleed for the school girl guides. However, she later came to know that actually she had taken the Mau Mau oath. In 1954, Wamboi left home to join Mau Mau after the brief detention of the father. This tells us that Wamboi was actually being guided by the spirit of revenge. Remember, his grandfather 
was buried alive by the British. Again in 1954, his father was detained. Wamboi was more than ready to revenge for all this against the British who were becoming a thorn in her family. Wamboi joined Mau Mau through their gardener, a woman who used to help them with domestic chores in their family. In Mau Mau, Wamboi is known as a town fighter. She is among the women who took all the Mau Mau oats. She records that she took 15 oats of Mau Mau, meaning that she took all the oats that were in Mau Mau. However, she was not a Walila fighter, meaning she didn't join the forest fighters in the forest to fight against the colonial administrators. However, her role in the town and in the villages were very, very central towards the success of the Mau Mau Walila fighters. Which roles did she play in Mau Mau War of Independence? Wamboi Otienu acted as a spy against the British. She mobilized women and other domestic staff to get arms and ensure that these guns and ammunition reached the fighters in the forest. She also campaigned against the Kalaba in Nairobi. Wamboi used her family prominency and knowledge and experience that she had acquired being the daughter of an inspector of police to assess government offices and some documents that were very central to the strategy and logistics in Mau Mau attacks. Additionally, Wamboi also surveyed police posts that the Mau Mau war fighters could be able to attack to acquire weapons, ammunition, and uniforms. Clearly speaking, looking at the roles that Wamboi Otieno performed in the Mau Mau War, somebody could term them as just passive. However, there is no passivity in these roles. These roles were very central towards the success of Mau Mau. Information is important. Weapons were very important. And the documents were extremely important. Out of our roles in Mau Mau, one boy was severely arrested. However, her worst arrest and detention experience was in 1960 when she was detained in Lam. What happened? Wamboi experienced the worst of her detention. Sexual abuse where she was severely raped and eventually impregnated by a British prison officer. Although she filed a case after her release and even after independency, Wamboi was never to be served with justice and therefore she was left with the wound. A child out of rape and no justice was served even after the country gained independency, the independency that she was fighting for. One could ask why was one boy arrested in 1960s? Allow us to take you back. Her arrest in 1960 was due to her mobilization of women to riot and strike in Nairobi. In 1961, she was released. When Kenya gained independence in 1963, 
Virginia Wamboi Otieno could not rest. She entered Kenyan politics. She was the first woman to run for a political position in post-colonial Kenya as a Kanu candidate in 1969. In 1974, she also fired. However, in both cases, she lost. Nevertheless, Wamboi was the leader of the Kanu women's wing and she was also involved in the Kiama Kiamoinge, an organization that was a successor of Mau Mau. In 1963, again, Wamboi met his for her first husband, Silvanus Milea Otieno. However, the husband died in 1986 with no will. This led to the battle that is famously recognized as Wamboi versus the state. In this case, Wamboi had to battle with Selfano's relatives about the parallel place of his late husband. A case he eventually lost, but was lucky enough to inherit a large portion of Silvanus Otieno's wealth. In 1985, Wamboy left Kanu due to election manipulations and lack of internal democracy. In the last 30 years of her life, she was involved in every Kenyan opposition party. For instance, in 1991, Wamboi was part of the Forum for Restoration of Democracy, a party that was aimed at bringing democracy in the country after the several years of single party politics in Kenya. In 1997, there was a problem with the Forum for Restoration and Democracy and therefore a split ensued. Wamboi Otieno moved to the National Development Party. In 2007, the most disputed elections in Kenya's history, Wamboi formed her own political party, the Kenya People's Conventional Party. In all these parties and fine Wamboi never gained or never became successful to enter into parliament as a member of a constituency or of a member of parliament. In 2003, Wamboi married Peter Mbogua, a marriage that sparked national reactions and talks in Kenya. The reason being, Peter Bogua was way too young than Mary than one boy. In 2011 April, despite the negative criticism, abuse and trolling, the two lovebirds confirmed their marriage in church at St. Andrew's Church in Nairobi. In 2011, August 30th, one boy died in Nairobi Hospital. She left behind a legacy of a woman who was not only a fighter for Kenya's independence, but who maintained her fighting in post-colonial Kenya, where she engaged in Kenyan politics. A woman who became a lead activist for women's rights and more importantly, opposition politics in the country, keeping the governments of the time on checks and parances. May her soul last in eternal peace. The CSTV, the Women Warriors of Africa's Independence, stay tuned and have a true and real.